here with uh, Jonas Priesing, the president of Manpower Group. Hi, Jonas. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. Uh, okay, so the first question is, what trends do you foresee for the global job market in the next few years? Well, it depends a little bit about where you are in the world, but what's very interesting is to see that most of the labor markets, wherever you are, are impacted by some structural changes, some, some trends that are truly global in nature. So you have talent and skills shortages, in some cases based on demographics, such as a lot of uh, you know, the developed countries. Uh, in other cases, because you have technology that is really advancing the way work gets done that requires a more skilled workforce. So you have two reasons why you have uh, talent shortages. Technology clearly has a huge impact on, on how the, the world of work is shaping up. And individuals with skills have many choices and they choose different professions. So it's shaping up, uh, you know, it's different for each geography, but it is really having very similar effects in, in different markets. So what are the professions that are in high demand these days? What are the professions that you think will be in high demand in the futures, as opposed to professions that might disappear in the future? It's actually very hard to predict what professions are going to be the big professions, because some of the most uh, int uh, some of the most difficult jobs uh, to, to predict are the ones that are not even here today. But what you can see very clearly is that there is a bifurcation in the world of work between higher level skilled jobs and lower or unskilled jobs. And the reality is this, that the, uh, if you don't have a high school education and possibly and a post-secondary degree, it's going to be much, much harder for you to find an occupation. So higher skilled jobs within uh, IT, engineering, you know, um, finance and accounting, professional jobs, managerial jobs, all of those skills and professions are the ones that are going to be in high demand. But what we see in many labor markets is that the lower and unskilled jobs are not really growing as much. And if they are growing, they are growing to such a degree that you still have uh, you know, quite, quite a low degree of wage inflation or no wage inflation, which means it's a very bifurcated uh, labor market. You want to make sure that you get a skill. So uh, initiatives that governments can take, as well as companies participate in, anything that makes education be close to the world of work, so you come out work ready and not only graduate ready, is a great idea. And you can see that in many countries that have very strong policies and a culture of internships and apprenticeships, they have much lower youth unemployment than countries that do not. How do you see the topic of youth unemployment that is quite common in Europe these days? Yeah, youth unemployment is the scourge of the labor market right now, in particular in Europe, but actually it's true in many parts of the world. Um, it is very difficult because young people coming late into the workforce buy things later, form families later, consume less, and are not able to be active and participative members of their uh, economies. And if you stay outside of the workforce for too long without getting in, you are going to have a permanent, what we call, wa wage scar. Yeah. So you're going to be permanently making less money over the lifetime and of, over your career than if you had come in earlier. So what are your tips for those youngsters? So the clearly need for further education, make sure that you know, they finish school and that, that they get, get additional certification. The closer they can get to the labor markets, participate uh, within uh, temporary jobs or internships or apprenticeships so that they have some work experience. Because we know that employers treasure individuals who are coming to them with a form of experience. Thank you very much, Jens. Thank you very much.